Okay, I'm here with uh, Master Tour Tech, Anthony Gagliano. Anthony, how's it, how's it going? Just got done talking to Matt Rollins, yep. who's kind of the, the man out in the street out there. Yeah. Um, so we're in PXG headquarters. This is like the prototype slash tour room here. Exactly, yeah. So your function, talk, talk to me a little bit about what you do here. Yeah, um, so I work here in headquarters, uh, do all the, the tour players' equipment, PGA Tour. Um, I'm also on the road part of the time throughout the year. So I'll probably end up doing about eight to 10 events with the tour truck, going from event to event to build for our players. And then when I'm not doing that, I'm just here at headquarters building for them as well. So talk to Matt a little bit about, you know, fitting and, you know, fitting tour players. But, yeah. you know, the general consumer and the PGA Tour player, totally different animals. Absolutely. Right? But, uh, but you're still fitting a golfer. Correct. So give me an example of, of something that you would have done for a tour player that's a little bit more nuanced than the general consumer. Yeah. So tour players, they are super picky about their wedges. Um, could be bounce, could be loft, could be any of that kind of stuff. We'll test wedges straight up with however we do it, the milled wedges or anything like that. Um, if they want the bounce tweak just a little bit, we can always do a grind for them. The good thing about our milled wedges is we can mill specific wedges for our players. So we can change bounce angles, we can change any of that kind of stuff without having to actually grind them. Um, they love it, they get all their personalized stuff. Um, same thing with woods, we can change rat glue goop inside of the head to affect ball flight. Um, you can move it more towards the toe, more towards the heel. You can move it back or forward to change spin rates, any kind of stuff like that. And those are extreme circumstances. So the, so the weighting system on a PXG driver, for example, mm -hmm. it's already pretty cooked. So if you're Absolutely. having to rack loose something, yep. that's for a player that's looking for very, something, very specific. Something. Exactly, right. yeah. And you can give a club to any of these players. They're going to hit it the same exact way every single time. So when you change something, just a minor bit of it, even two grams, you're going to see a difference. So give me an example. So I, I saw a wedge that you're building a wedge for Wyndham Clark. Yeah. Um, he's getting ready for, for a big one next week, Absolutely, right? Yep. So this wedge, it's a 60 degree wedge. Yep. Um, what did you do to it and why did you do it? Yeah, so this is just one of our standard Sugar Daddy wedges. Um, he wanted a little bit more toe relief and kind of like when he opens it up or hits it like high shots, he feels like it catches just a touch on the back edge. So what we did was he just took a little tiny bit off of the, the trailing edge and what that does is it gives him a little bit of relief in the spot that he was catching before. And these are specific tour requests. So like just Absolutely. for the record, like this isn't something that, you know, like my, myself off the street. No. You yeah. know, you're not getting hand ground wedges, but yeah. that's not necessarily for what I do. This yeah, is the exactly. Guy's for his these, life. Yeah, exactly. These guys are playing for their job. Um, day in and day out, they need something to perform perfectly for them on every single shot. Um, this was just something that he kind of thought like, hey, this is kind of where it catches, I think. Let's try to grind this a little bit see where it goes, and then if we can mill a wedge from there, we can go from there. So I actually talked to Matt a little bit also about how far you guys will go to get a player what he needs. Yep. So Ryan Moore's, you know, dynamic, uh, dynamic light X100s, yep. you guys chased those downs and, and got him what he needed, which is yep. very, Bob, very Bob Parsons oh, yeah. culture, right? Yep. He'll do whatever it takes to, to get it done. Um, but you also noticed, for, like for Zach, for example, plays an older shaft, which we have up here. Yeah. That caught my eye, so yes. that's like a 10-year-old shaft. Exactly, yeah. So these, these Demona shafts, he's been playing them forever. Um, he loves them in his fairway woods, and it's one of those things that you, you find something that you love, it's really hard to change out of it. Um, three woods, the hardest club in the bag to change for anybody, whether it's the head or the shaft. So we actually found a couple of these line, uh, lying around, and we're able to hold on to them so that if he ever needs anything in the future, we can go ahead and use the same shaft that he's been playing for years. And on the tour truck, same, same kind of thing. Like You Absolutely. guys will keep things for them uh, yep. to be ready. And that's not just for your staff players in general. Like You guys get a lot of requests from, Correct. Everyone. from guys that aren't even in your staff, yep. right? Everyone out there. So everyone plays something different. It could be the head, it could be the shaft, it could be the grip. Um, those companies out there on the road are really good about stocking us up with their product. Right. Um, so we'll have kind of drawers like this on the truck where they're going to stock us up with whatever grips they have, whatever shafts our players use, that kind of stuff. So, so, so let's, let's maybe pop one of these open. So yep. this is, uh, they got some names on them here. So these are, like walk me through what's in here. Yeah, exactly. So we've got our staff guys. They all kind of use some of their own equipment, they have some of their own milled wedges, that kind of stuff, grips, whatever else. Okay. Um, so we'll kind of keep that stuff on hand so that whenever a player asks for something, we have it ready to go. Um, especially with the milled wedges, that's a process. It's not just a, hey, we can mill that in an, an hour. Right. It's, it's got to be milled, then it's got to be cleaned up, ground up, then blasted, painted, 
built, and then shipped out. So it's a, it's a process. So the, uh, theoretically, like a drawer like this is replicated out on the truck, which... Exactly, okay. yeah. Yeah, we have all these drawers just on the truck, um, quantities in-house and on the truck, just in case anyone's in town or they're on the road and need something built. Which we see a lot of, you know, in, in, in Golf WRX, you know, there's a lot of tour trailer visits, and, you know, they all yeah. have these cool drawers and this yeah. and that. What I think is unique about about PXG and the staff that you guys have out there, it's a very tight-knit group, right? Yeah, and they're all very sure. specific yeah. players. Yeah, um, they'll... they'll touch each other's equipment, they'll try to hit whatever they can to, to see what works for them. And it's not just XFs for random consumers on the weekend. Sure. Some guys will hit it here and there. And Obviously, a lot of different player profiles. Yep. Like I would say, you know, Zach and Ryan might fit into the same profile, but yep. then you got, you know, Pat's high spin, high speed. For sure. James, yep. high launch, low spin. I mean, it's, it's all over the map. So yep. you as a, as a builder, yep. you're on your toes all the time. Constantly. Absolutely, yeah. So some of the guys want specific things. They'll have their own milled wedges. They'll have anything kind of like that. So like for Pat, he loves all of his irons and wedges to be black. So we do this specifically just for him. And he's even got his daughter's name milled into the wedge. Wow. So he, he has all this kind of customized stuff. Um, some of the guys like to play the chrome irons with painted lines on them. Some of them don't like the painted lines on them. So it's just, it's different from player to player and everyone has their own preferences kind of thing. So out on tour, like um, one of the, I guess, uh, thoughts would be that most of these guys would be in like the 03, 11 T. Correct. Yeah. Right? You think the smaller the iron, the better the player kind of thing. Um, that's not necessarily that's not the true. Case. Yeah, exactly. So Pat, for instance, he plays XF in some of the longer irons and P's in all of the other irons. Um, he plays our milled wedges, but then there's someone like Charles who plays the smallest iron he could possibly get, our T, right. and we end up grinding the sole to narrow the sole on him a little bit more. Um, so everyone's a little bit different, but everyone plays a little bit of hodgepodge of all of our equipment. And then you have a guy like Scott Langley, yeah. who, like, he had a cool story about Scott. Yeah, so Scott's been in the past couple of days. He lives in town, so he pops in from time to time. Um, this morning, he actually texted me and said, hey, bud, are you in town? And I said, yeah, and he goes can you build me a 28 degree hybrid? So awesome. And I was like, 28 degree for a tour player? And he goes, I have no ego. <laughs> like, just build it, I love it, I wanna hit it. Um, so he came by, picked it up, and he's gonna go hit it today and let me know how he goes. And I've noticed that about, about PXG specifically, and it's not because it's a PXG spot, but like, yeah. I'm noticing a lot of the ego part of it yeah. sort of gets lost because of the way you guys manufacture golf clubs and, and the design of the club. Like, yeah. you can have a beefier profile and yeah. still get the blade control, the yep. blade feel. Yeah, there's a reason we engineer all this kind of stuff. Um, it's not just one iron fits all. Right. Um, all of this stuff is to help improve games. And even tour players need it from time to time. So they're going to go with a driving iron. They're going to go with a, a high lofted hybrid. They're going to go with an XF iron over a T iron. It's right. just whatever fits their game and what they need in that moment. And to me, that's kind of the secret sauce of what you guys are doing here yep. is the fact that you have this palette of equipment. Yeah. But it's kind of like what's in the in the in interchangeable. The, yeah, and, and yeah. how I and mean, how it performs because ultimately it's how the ball's going to fly. Absolutely. And yeah. you guys can take a really chunky club and make it fly like a blade would. Yep. Right. That that to me is where all this, the the Parsons comes in. Yeah, exactly. And it changes from tournament to tournament. So conditions. Some guys might need a hybrid one week to hit it a little bit higher and land a little softer. Some guys might want a driving iron to penetrate the wind. Right. So it just depends on what they're looking for. Uh, last couple of questions. So you guys do a lot of work for the college teams here. You yep. have uh, Oklahoma, SMU, uh, University Oregon, of Oregon, Duke. Yeah. Um, Duke. You know, it's, and that's growing. Joel's doing oh, a great yeah. job out there. You yep. know, getting people excited about PXGs. Yeah, the kids love it. How many orders are you doing for the college guys? Like, how active is that? Yeah, that program? when I'm in town, it's probably almost 60% of the stuff that I do. Um, it's college stuff. Yeah, these college guys, they're they're out there playing. They're practicing every single day, so they need fresh wedges. They need the new stuff as soon as it comes out to the public, it's it's going to their hands. So these kids are playing the tournaments all the time. They want the best equipment as well. And it's the PXG thing too. Absolutely, it's like, yeah. yeah. I mean, these, it's, it's such a it's such a thing, right? Yeah. So these kids are showing up to tournaments with PXGs in their bag, and everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, they have PXGs!" Like, right. Yeah. Does the wraparound season um, for you guys? What I've noticed is that most of these guys are pretty baked by like March or April. Yeah. Because then it starts getting gnarly the rest of the year, yeah. right? Most of these guys like to dial in their equipment at the beginning of the year. Um, coming off the off season, they're rusty too, so they want to go out and practice and hit some stuff, see what's going and on. And all the new stuff kind of comes out. In that, exactly, yeah. yeah. Test all the new equipment, try to get it in the bag right away. Um, so they're changing probably in the beginning of the season, West Coast swing, maybe in the Florida swing. But from here on out, they're pretty dialed in it's with just, what they're 
their stuff is. Grips and exactly. all that head covers yeah. and whatever yeah. else. Uh, thanks, dude. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah. No problem.